Welcome to Nanda Hobbs. My name is Ralph Hobbs and today I'd like to talk about paint mediums. It's one of those things that we're often discussing with people, uh, the different forms of painting that uh, artists uh, use, whether it be oil paint, watercolour or acrylic paint. But what does that actually mean? So to start with, let's discuss what paint actually comes from or how or what is the what is the base element to it and it comes down to pigment and pigment is sourced from all sorts of things from earth to minerals to plant products and it has a long history going back many thousands of years and has been used by man uh, to create images for, for that time. But to give you a sense of it, this is pigment in its rawest form. It's a powder and this particular one's called Bohemian Green Earth. But it comes in all the ranges of colour and over the years, particularly over the last hundred odd years, the, the manufacturing of paint has become really um, integrated with all sorts of technologies and the range of colours have been developed and the stabilisation of them. But what is the difference between oil, watercolour and acrylic? It comes down to the binding medium and each of those mediums uh, allow a certain uh, quality to the paint and flexibility for the artist to, that uses them. So with oil paint, it's broadly speaking, it is bound with linseed oil. Uh, and the quality of the paint depends on the amount of pigment that's used, the quality of the pigment, and also the quality of the medium. Now, linseed oil um, is basically crushed uh, uh, seeds, and there are all sorts of other uh, oils that are used as well, but this is the primary one. You can see how it's quite a viscous, uh, clear oil, and basically what happens is that the uh, artist in back in the day before tubes of paint, would grind and pound the pigment together with the oil to create an emulsion. Now, what that meant is the artist could create depth, depth of um, a colour, and you can see in oil paint there's a great range of, uh, of tones and colours that can be created, and also ways of working. So just on my right hand here, we have an Adam Noodleman painting. Now, he works in a way with oil paint where he works in very thin glazes, and this is a traditional method. So what happens behind the painting in the early layers informs the colour colour and the translucentness uh, as you move through. Oil painting's really slow drying and in the cases of uh, artists in, in our stable of artists like James Drinkwater or Paul Ryan, Shen Ping, where they use really thick viscous paint, it can take many months for the paint to dry. So you have this broad range of the way paint can actually work on the surface. With the developments of manufacturing throughout the Industrial Revolution, we find that uh, oil paint in particular could then be produced in tubes. And what that meant is there was a greater flexibility for artists to work outside, to travel with their paint, and also a far greater range of, of colour. And, but basically, the, the principles are the same. It's pigment and uh, linseed oil in an emulsion. The second medium I'd like to talk about is acrylic paint. It's otherwise known as synthetic polymer paint and it, like oil paint, uses pigment, of course, and the binder is a, a, essentially a plastic. It's almost like a glue-like substance. So just to give you a feel for that, you can see in, in this quite a runny medium and that is mixed in with the uh, mixed in with the pigment to create a, a paint which dries very quickly. Now that lends itself to uh, some hard edged abstractions and we see here with uh, Black Douglas's work and you'll find a lot, of, um, a lot of abstract artists like using it and it's also sometimes used by artists as underpainting before they glaze over the top with oil paints. We also find good acrylic paint being used with a lot of the indigenous paintings. Now part of the reason for that is it's quite hardy. Once it's dried it can be rolled and that's really useful when you're moving uh, large canvases around the country, particularly from way out in the western desert through to galleries in the city and also obviously around the world. 
It can also uh, be manufactured in tubes and it's a, it's a really uh, good way for artists to, to work quickly, but as I say, they've got to work in such a way that um, their open time, what we call the amount of time that you can move paint around on a canvas, um, is fairly limited. So you need to be fairly conscious of what you, you're looking to achieve. Now, acrylic paint and oil paint both dry as the water content uh, leaves the, the paint uh, emulsion both dry as a hard surface and it doesn't reactivate easily. The last medium I'd like to talk about is watercolour. It, like all the other mediums, comes from pigment uh, and uh, in contemporary painting uses the binder medium of gum arabic, which is a very beautiful, viscous, naturally forming gum that you can just see here rolling out. Um, sometimes people use honey as well. And that emulsion binds with the uh, pigment and you use water to dilute it. Now, the, one of the differences with watercolour is that you can use uh, water to activate it even when it's dry. So I have here uh, my pretty rough old painting pan and all the blocks of watercolour there are just activated with a little bit of water and then you can go on and paint with them. Now watercolour is by its very nature translucent. So you see a, a lot of uh, watercolour artists really using the light of the paper to come through. There is one other medium that is often used in conjunction with watercolour and that's called gouache. And gouache uh, uses uh, chalk or whiting mixed in with the watercolour to make it opaque so you get more solid colour. Sometimes it's referred in its really simplest terms as poster paint. Now all of these mediums have different set of levels of light sensitivity. So you need to be thinking about where you hang the works and how you look after the works uh, from the various mediums. So for instance, a really strong oil paint uh, canvas will be much more hardy in direct light. It's very, very important if you're hanging a watercolour work that it's behind glass, preferably UV uh, protected glass or perspex that allows uh, the UV rays which will discolour and fade watercolour over time. So you need to be thinking about where you place the works and how the various mediums um, uh, are looked after. If you'd like to know more about all the various mediums, it's one of the things that we talk about when we're discussing artworks with you. So please don't hesitate in dropping us a line or an email if there's anything more that you'd like to know. Obviously the history of the, the actual medium that artists use is as old as art itself. So it's really important to uh, understand it and to Embrace each medium for the benefits it can bring to an artwork.